Document Studio is an add-on that helps you merge data from Google Sheets and Google Forms. If you're new to Document Studio, I suggest watching the Getting Started Guide. You can find a link to that in the show notes. And if you haven't done so already, please go to documentstudio.pro and install the add-on. So let's assume you run a cake shop. Your customers place order with the help of a Google form. The orders arrive in a Google sheet. Uh, you get an email notification for the order. An email also goes out to the customer with the invoice and also a PayPal link is included where they can pay the invoice. So in the next few minutes, I'll show you how to complete this entire workflow using Document Studio. Let's get started. The first thing we'll do is create a Google form. I'll also change the theme of the form. This one with the cake looks really nice. Then I'll add all the required questions. We'll be asking the customer's name, their email address, the postal address or the delivery address. Then we will be asking them what kind of cake they would like to order and whether they would like to have some extra decoration or not. A very basic form but you can obviously build more complex forms if you like. So now that our Google form is ready, we will link to our spreadsheet so that all responses are saved in the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet has been created and here is how it looks like. So whenever somebody submits a form, a new entry will be, a new row will be added to this Google spreadsheet automatically. To see this in action, I'll switch to the Google Forms and submit a test entry. And as soon as I hit the submit button, you see that a new row has been added to the Google Spreadsheet. So our orders are getting captured into the Google Spreadsheet, but it does not have any information about the price of the items or the taxes. So what we'll do is we'll create a new column called cake price and then we'll use the VLOOKUP function to calculate the prices. Now we'll add another sheet to the spreadsheet uh, that will be like our internal price list. We will have the cake names in one column and the cake prices in the other column. Next we switch to the response spreadsheet and then use the VLOOKUP to get the prices based on the form answers. So for this uh, function our search key or the cake name is in column E and then we will visually select the spreadsheet range. The prices are in the second column so we will put 2 as the third parameter and our price uh, list is not sorted so we will say false for the fourth parameter. Now the only problem with this formula is that it is only available in the current row. So if somebody submits a new Google form entry, the formula would not be available in the new row. Therefore what we'll do is we'll go to the cell and then press command shift enter to convert it into an array formula. Oops, we are getting all these errors now and that's because the cake names are empty for the, all the other rows. So the VLOOKUP function is failing because the search key is blank. So what we'll do is we'll change the formula slightly so that the VLOOKUP happens only when the cake name is not blank.
all good now so if i go to the next row and enter another cake say red velvet uh, you can say that it correctly fetched the price and there are no errors in the column anymore we'll similarly add a new column to calculate the decoration charges now in this uh, column the basic formula is that if the customer has selected yes for extra decoration we add 99 to the bill else we do not do anything so again we use an array formula to apply the formula to the entire column provided the extra decoration charges column is not blank next we'll add formulas to calculate the taxes and the total amount of the invoice I'll try to put more detailed descriptions in the show notes so you have a better understanding of how these formulas work. The formulas are ready. I'll show you just one more cool feature of Document Studio. You can actually insert images of Google Maps in your email messages and documents using the Google Maps function. So using this function is very simple. Just go to an empty cell and put equal to Google Maps and then select the cell that has the address. Now what it will give you is the URL of a static Google Maps image. Now this is very handy for inserting maps images in your Google document templates or even email messages. So we are almost done here. We will just add one more column to the sheet and that's called PayPal payment link. Now if you have a PayPal account, you can just put your email address, the amount of the invoice and the name of the item against which that invoice is raised and the add-on will create a nice uh, link that you can put in your email address or you can put in your documents, the merged documents that users can click to pay your invoice. Our response sheet is now ready and now we need to create an invoice template. So I'll go to Google Drive and create a new template. I can either create a blank template but to save time I'll just pick one of the ready-made invoice templates that are available in Google Drive. So what we'll do is we'll just um, slightly modify this uh, template to suit our requirements. Um, We'll add variable fields. Whenever you are adding variable fields, just remember to surround them with curly braces. You can use any variable field that's available in your response spreadsheet. Uh, to add a link to the PayPal payment, we'll use the built-in hyperlink spreadsheet function. Now this takes two parameters. The first parameter of the function is the URL. Now in this case it will be a variable field because we are storing our PayPal links under PayPal payment link variable. And the next is the text. For branding purpose we will also add a logo image to the invoice template. This is just like any other Google spreadsheet, so you can add formulas, functions, you can even change the formatting, change the fonts, whatever you like, just like you do with other Google Sheets. So a template is now ready and we are all set to perform merge. So I'll switch to the response spreadsheet and choose document studio under the add-ons menu. Here in the document merge section, I'll choose the template that we have just created.
we'll put the customer's name in the file name so whenever a new order is generated the customer's name is automatically added to the file name we'll use the default pdf format for export but there are a variety of options available from microsoft office to google native formats under the google forms merge section i'll create the email template uh, this is the email template that will go out to customers and to our team whenever a new order is received Like in document templates, you can also use variable fields in your email subject or email body. Now we'll select the folder in Google Drive where all our invoices and orders would be saved. Now if you're expecting too many orders, your Google Drive folder can quickly get cluttered. So what we can do is we can neatly organize these files into subfolders. So these folders, these subfolders can also be dynamically generated based on your form answers. In the file sharing section, we have an option to share the merged documents with customer or with the team members. I'll skip this. Next, we have the Google Cloud Print connection. So as soon as an order arrives, it's immediately sent to the printer. I'll skip it for this example. In the last step, you have a couple of options. You have Merge Now or you have Merge on Form Summit. So for Google Forms, we will turn on the option that says Merge on Form Summit and save the settings. Now what we are essentially telling the add-on is, as soon as a new form is submitted, run Merge and create all the documents and create the emails. So we are all set now. Our Google Form is live and ready to take orders. So let's do a live test now. So the form has been successfully submitted. We switch to the response sheet and you see a new row has been added. All the prices and taxes have been calculated. And you have a couple of extra columns that says whether the email has gone out or not and whether the documents have been generated and what's their location in Google Drive. Now I'll switch to Gmail to see if the emails have gone out or not. So I'll go to the send items folder and there you see an email that just went out. Now this email has the link to the PayPal invoice, it has the invoice as well. Let's see what happens when I click this uh, PayPal link. So it takes me directly to the payment page where the clients can pay for your invoice. I hope you would find Document Studio useful. Just go to documentstudio.pro and install in your Google Drive. Thanks.